Here's another item made quite a long time ago. Checking to see if it's dated. <laughs> it was probably about 25 years ago. <coughs> it's um, the Travelling Steady and uh, I think it came as a sort of kit in as much as we've got two cast two cast aluminum bottom and top half beyond that the rest is down to uh, general fabrication so we've got uh, I'm not going to dwell too long on this because it, it took quite a long time to make but uh, it's fairly simple on the other hand it hasn't got nice uh, wheels on it it's got uh, fossil bronze bearing faces so we've got top and bottom half uh, this is machined to take a locking piece and that locks it down so it's a four point unit uh, sometimes people use three I think Keith Fenner uses a three which would be uh, two, two rear and one front and this is a four point. All you need to know really is underneath all the, this is a piece that was cut so that I can fit it between the rails of the lathe bed. It's a funny shape because of the width I had to accommodate and there's not much to see that side and the only other things of interest really you've got four four locking you um four little t-bar locking pieces and then uh, i don't know whether this will get a close-up oh yeah i think that goes sharp so this is a piece of round which has been machined flat on one surface. Prior to that these phosphor bronze pieces were brazed on and then the whole thing turned to finish and then that is locking so it will hold quite a reasonable size piece. It's never been used a lot because I haven't done a huge number in the past of of especially long pieces. Uh, oh the hinge section that needed machined out as well. So anyway there you are there's a traveling steady. I might put it in the lathe just to show it in position. But the other, should we call it a half steady? I can't even remember what we call these. I call it a half steady. This was, uh, that was also 1988 this is working on the same principle with regards to the uh, support pieces. This was made out of solid. It's just what was convenient to make out of solid. So we've got a base, uh, there's a machined relief there. Can't even remember what that was for. Uh, this is for mounting on the uh, cross slide. And two gussets, the gussets are bolted through with allen heads and then this inch square that's uh, secured there and here there's another gusset bolt and then quite simply just the same same idea with regards to uh, the support sections Cross of bronze on the end and flats machined on to take the locking. That's a heavy old chunk but it's actually very very strong because the gussets hold it together in essence. And uh, there we are, that's just another, I don't know whether I can just go in any closer on that just to get a bit more detail. There we are, just a little bit closer. In fact, I'll just do a quick close-up. Whoops! When I think of it, I'll just do a quick close-up of the uh, of the full steady. Not that I can get in a lot closer anyway. I don't think. 
without losing bits. Well, anyway, there's the uh, upper section. So you can see the hinge on the left and the uh, locking piece on the right. Let's put this in the lathe and uh, just show it in position. There you go, that's how it sits in the machine. It's just placed arbitrarily at the moment, but uh, typically it's useful if uh, there's a very long, rather small diameter piece which has to be worked on the end for some reason instead of going through the spindle. I mean, usually you project just the, the amount that you need to work on, but I remember one piece where I had uh, a very large diameter on one side and I had to work on a very narrow diameter the other end and the uh, steady made a huge difference. And providing it was kept well lubricated, the effect on the uh, material was uh, minimal, no, no marks to speak of at all, easily polished out. Just a quick interest item. I did mention at some point, I think, the problem one always has of checking center height for tooling. This was a very simple little device. Piece of uh, aluminum with a steel base, pillar, and another piece of aluminum which was split. So all it does, you won't be able to see this because I can't get in close enough to show it, but uh, that light may shine off there. Not sure if it's in frame actually. May or may not be, you know, that should be in frame. Yeah. Depending how I hold that, you may just see a scribe line. Anyway, that line was likely taken originally, I think, from the uh, tailstock. And it was checked against the uh, three jaw. So, what it enables me to do is a very quick check. In fact, there are two ways I can do this as a as a quick check so I can come up and uh, check on this I know this is already centered it's got shimming underneath and then the other very simple cheat and I'm not even sure what I did with it it is a small piece let me just see if I've got it in here <laughs> okay this isn't uh, <coughs> quite as reliable, but this is something that I can put on the compound slide and see if that shows well enough. So that's just a piece of piece of material. And I can feel that there's no step. The tool tip and uh, that test button, they're nicely leveled up. That's a very quick check. It may be half a thou or a thou out of accuracy, but that's always just a quick reassurance check. So that saves having to set up against uh, tailstock or headstock center. Sometimes simple is good. Here's a quick item of interest, or maybe interest, might be boring everybody rigid. <laughs> it's just a piece of square bar plate drilled out, uh, the two welded together, and this is to go onto the uh, <coughs> compound slide. You've got a bush collar in there, and I think that's for spacing underneath when I underneath when I need it. <coughs> anyway, all this is, and I don't know how many people have used this technique. Uh, that is a graver. At least that's what we used to call it. I guess it's a contraction of the word engraver. It's for hand turning. I don't know that shows how well that shows in the frame.
that's the uh, grinding on it just to a flat diamond and then a nice nice heavy handle so this is basically acting just as a tool rest a bit like you'd use in a wood turning lathe really and by judicious use here carefully light cuts have to dress that and keep that keep that edge real sharp uh, you can actually do some quite interesting work on awkward shapes if you're making a compound curve uh, you can certainly do some rough cutting that way not used very much but now and again it's proved extremely useful and the supports very simple this was a fun project it's all made from uh, some solid and I can't even remember what the threading was. <clears throat> I used to use 26 TPI sometimes particularly working on uh, one item all the time so that's bored out and uh, knurled and there's a relief made for an o-ring then the uh, midsection here is turned and bored to take a wick so we put some <coughs> put this a smoker by the way did I even mention that <laughs> we put a wick in there and do that up and the o-ring seals it and then a cap that's uh, also we've got an o-ring relief and o-ring there do that up got a date on it as usual 1991 <laughs> there we are I need extra light really anyway there you go it's not uh, often that uh, smoking is used for marking material usually it's what we used to call engineers blue or cobalt blue copper sulfate solution that works just leaves you a slight reddish film or one form or another of a sharpie but the smoker does its own work usefully because it lays down a good layer of carbon and if you're checking for a fit on a taper for instance uh, the soot works very well <coughs> 